So I think today my uh, plan is to review the second R exam. Uh, I don't have time to uh, tell all the details of the solutions. So I will uh, upload the solution after the class and you can download from the course site. And I think if you have other questions after you read the solution, you can email me or come to my office hour. Um, so I think um, the second R exam is not easy. So um, the, the only thing I think is easy is uh, number two, the question two. Question two uh, is about the EM wave. And if you know, you find the uh, equation on the equation sheet, then it's uh, very straightforward to get the answer. But for number one and the number four, uh, it's, you need other calculation to figure out the, the results. So I will spend uh, more time on the question one and the four. And if you have question in between, uh, you can stop me and answer your question. Okay, so first one, um, this is uh, an electric loop. We have a circuit loop and there is a magnetic field. The magnetic field and the, elect and the circuit uh, is moving. So for the first five questions, and the magnetic field is stationary and the loop is moving in the right direction. If it's moving in the right direction, moving in this direction with a constant speed. Loop is giving a speed and the velocity is 10 meter per second. And what we know is at the first time, the switch is at position two and the resistance is five ohm. Uh, inductor is 100 milli H. And we know the geometry of the of the loop, one to five, and the geometry of the uh, magnetic field region, that's a point four. So that's all. And first question, how quickly is a current established in the loop? And uh, what's the final magnitude of the current in the loop of wire? So to calculate the current, we are going to use Ohm's law. Ohm's law. Change the, the thickness. So the Ohm's law said if we want to calculate the current inside the circuit, then we need to know the voltage on the resistor and divide by the resistance. And the resistance actually we already know the value, that's a 5 ohm. But we don't know the voltage. The voltage coming from the EMF, the electromagnetic. Uh, force from the change of the magnetic flux. So the voltage, we're going to use Friday's law. Friday's law is that the voltage induced by the change of the flux is equivalent to the derivative of flux of time. So flux over time. Then let's uh, calculate the flux. The flux here is fine as a magnetic field times the area of the magnetic field inside the loop. Inside the loop. So the area inside the loop is this region, right? And the, the area increases as time. And if we know the length of this side is B, the length of this side is Bt. So we can calculate the magnetic uh, uh, flux that will be the B times the length of um, the few times the other length, that's Vt, the area. Okay, so the voltage is equivalent to the derivative of B, little b, velocity, and the time. And we will have the magnetic field, the size of the length of the side and the velocity. Okay, that's the voltage. Voltage. Then the current will be V, V, V over resistance. That's how we get the current. So the current 
is um, 48 times 10 to the negative 3 ampere. That's uh, number one. Number two, what's the direction of the current? To determine the current direction, we use Lenz's law. Lenz's law said um, the current induces a current. Current oppose the change of magnetic flux. The change of magnetic flux, let's see, uh, inside the loop, the magnetic flux increase. And the increasing direction is out of the page because the B is out of page. So the flux increase and is out of the page. So we're going to decrease the change. So my thumb, my right hand thumb is go to into the page and my four finger curl uh, clockwise. The current goes clockwise. <clears throat> clockwise. Okay. So this is how we de uh, determine the direction of the current. And number three, uh, make a plot of the magnitude of the current as a function of position. So since uh, this assumption that um, the front of the loop doesn't interact with the magnetic field. So that means this length is infinite long, very long. This is very long. So we don't need to um, worry about this length. So in this case, all the current induced in the loop will be a constant, this one. This is the current inside the loop. So if this is a true, that means the current doesn't change. So after the loop uh, enters the magnetic field, the current is a constant. This is a constant. And the value is 48 milli A. But before the loop enters the magnetic field, there's no induced current. So that means before the zero meter, the current is zero. So that means at the zero meter, there's a big jump. This is a plot. Then let's see, number four. Uh, now assume that the switch is at position one, and how does your answer in the question one change? And how quickly the current established and what final value does it tend towards? If it goes to position one, that means um, we connect the inductor inside the loop. And if we simplify this circuit, uh, we will have a battery. So I treat this region as a battery. This battery provides a constant current. This is battery connect with an uh, inductor and a resistor. Inductor, resistor. So this is RL circuit. And at the beginning, we know um, the current is zero. So there's no current inside the loop. And when time go to infinity, and the current go to the maximum, that's uh, 48 meter, milli A. Um, that if there's no inductor, the curve is a big jump. But if there is an inductor, the inductor is going to oppose the change of the current. That means if we connect the inductor to this, circuits, we won't have a singularity here. This is not true. I use another color. We won't have a singularity here. And we will have an increasing curve uh, gradually, then go to the maximum. So that will be 
curve will look like this. So this is how the current increase. So let me go back to the question five, no, question four. It says, how does the answer in the question one change? So uh, the question one change is that the current will increase gradually. And then reach the maximum. The maximum value. And how quickly it said, how long does it take to reach the maximum? That's a time constant. So the time constant for the inductor and the resistor connection, that will be the inductance over the resistance. And we will have um, the result is 100 milli H and 5 O. We have 5 milli H over 5 O. That's 20 milliseconds. So it takes 20 milliseconds to reach a maximum. Then plot the magnitude of the current. So that will be zero at the beginning, then at the infinity, it go to the, the constant. That's, uh, let me see, 48 milli A. Then to reach a maximum, it's increased slowly. Like this. So this is the current plot in the diagram. And this is number five, number six. Now the switch S is back to position two. Okay, there's no inductor. And but we change the shape of the magnetic field region as shown in the figure. So there is a triangle region in front, then a rectangular region on the back. Again, plot of magnetic field, uh, plot the magnitude of the current as a function of position. Um, okay, so to get this, uh, we need to figure out how does the shape impact the current. And we know if we have a rectangular region, then the result will be the same because the rectangular region gave us a constant current like this. So when um, the rectangular region reaches this side, interact with this loop, then we will have a constant value of the current. So after point two, the current is a constant. That's a 48 milli A. That's in the rectangular part. And if in the triangle, how does this impact the, uh, the current? Let's check the flux. The flux is magnetic field times area. And the I, the current, is equivalent to the change of the flux over time divided by the resistance. And the magnetic field is a constant, so we have R, B, then change of the area. Right? Area is a function of time. And if we increase the, the distance, the length, then the area will increase. And the area increase in a parabolic relation. So that will be A is a function of time square. Because we know for a triangle, the area is equivalent to this side times this side over two. So this is A, this is B. And A and the B are both a function of time. And they have the linear relation with the time. So if we increase A, we will increase B. So that means the area is a function of time square. Okay. So if there's a time square, we'll do the derivative that will be a proportional relation with time, with linear time. So that means the current will increase with time linearly. So if it increases with time linearly, that means we will start from zero 
beginning, then increase to the 48 million linearly. So this is a relation. Okay, that's the number six. Number seven, for this new magnetic field region, what's the final value of the current? And uh, the final value that will be remain the same because the only depend on the shape of the magnetic field region. In the rectangular shape, we don't change the current. So the current is still 48 milliamp. So finally, assume now the loop and its circuit are standing still, but the magnetic field is moving. Okay, so uh, the loop is stationary and the magnetic field move to the left with the same speed. Which of the previous answers stay the same, which one change? So these two conditions are equivalent. So no, there's no parameter will change. So there's no answer will change. And the loop moving in this way is equivalent to the magnetic field moving in this way. We just pick up different reference frame. So this is uh, question problem one. Do you have other question? Okay, number two. Uh, EM waves. If you have the equation and you know how to find the equation on the equation sheet, then this will be uh, a very easy problem. And the first one, we have a uh, oh, EM wave travel in the positive x direction. And the electric field is in the positive z direction. Then what's the strength of the magnetic field? And what's the direction of the magnetic field? Sketch the magnetic field vector. Let's draw the direction of the propagation. The wave traveling in x direction. So this is the speed of EM wave. This is the direction of the electric field. Okay. So let's use um, right hand row. We know uh, I curl my forefinger from E to the B. Should uh, my thumb goes to the direction of the traveling. So my thumb goes to the right and my forefinger curl counterclockwise. That means the magnetic field should go down. Magnetic field goes down will be uh, the electric field turn to the uh, negative y direction. So this is the uh, magnetic field. Okay, so uh, if you have a question on the magnetic field, then you will find that um, there will be two options. One is positive y, the other is negative y. And uh, if you draw the positive y and use your right hand to check, then you will find it's not the same way. And so we change the direction to negative y, then we have the uh, correct answer. Okay. So the direction of the magnetic field will be negative y direction. Y direction and what's the strength of the, of the magnetic field? The strength we have the formula that says the magnetic field, the electric field has a relation that's the E over C, the speed of light. So we have an uh, electric field that's 100 volt per meter divided by 3 times 10 to the 8 meter per second. So we have the result that should be. 3.3 times 10 to the negative seven. The unit is Tesla. <clears throat> okay, number two, uh, how must a circuit loop of wire be oriented in order for the voltage induced by the radio wave to reach its maximum amplitude? Uh, describes the orientation 
and give the direction of the area vector of the loop. We need a loop to get the uh, current inside the loop. So if we want to induce a uh, current in the loop, we need to get a maximum flux. Maximum flux in the loop, then the change of the flux will induce current. So how can we get the max flux? We know the magnetic field goes down, okay? So we need a circuit and perpendicular to the direction of magnetic field. That will be this direction. The, the, the loop oriented, orients in the y x z plane. So this is y direction. So the loop should be in the x and z plane. In x z plane. Then the x z plane is perpendicular to the y direction, right? Um, okay, so if we have the orientation of this loop, the next one is uh, what's the area vector of the loop? The area vector is defined of the normal direction of the surface. So in the x, z plane, the normal direction is y direction, right? So this is y direction. So you can use negative y or positive y, doesn't matter. So that will be parallel to the y direction. So the area vector parallel to the y direction either positive y or negative y, doesn't matter. Number three, calculate the value of the maximum induced voltage when the loop has a surface area. Okay, let's calculate the voltage. According to Friday's law, the induced voltage is equal to the derivative of flux. The flux is uh, magnetic field times the area of the loop. And the area of the loop is a constant, so we can take the A outside of the derivative. So I have the derivative of the magnetic field times the area. And the magnetic field, let's say in the EM waves, the magnetic field is oscillation. Is a sine function or a cosine function? This is this is b. This is time. So we are going to use the maximum of magnetic field times a sine function, omega t, because we know the frequency is one hundred one hundred megahertz. Right? One hundred megahertz. So that means uh, we have the omega. Okay, so in this case, let's do the derivative. And V will be the A derivative of the magnetic field that will be magnetic field maximum value times the frequency times uh, sine terms of cosine. So sine function omega t. So that's a V. And the question is about the maximum value. The maximum voltage will be this part, this term will give us maximum value. Maximum value A, B non times omega. A is the area, that's a one centimeter square, and the B is the maximum magnetic field here. This is maximum magnetic field. How about the omega? Omega is the angular frequency, the angular uh, speed, and the 100 megahertz is the frequency, that's f. And from omega to f, that will be omega is equal to 2 pi f. So there is a, uh, there's a factor of 2 pi in front of 
the frequency. So we have to use 100 megahertz times 2 pi. That's OK. OK, let me tell you the result. Uh, the result of the uh, induced maximum voltage is 0, uh, 0, 0, 29. I don't remember wrong. Uh, no, 21. OK, volt. That's number three. Number four, um, what's the peak magnitude of the point vector? And what's the direction? The direction of the point vector is parallel to the direction of the travel. So this is direction of point vector. The propagation is a point vector. So uh, number four, we have direction parallel to the speed of light. And the the other question is, what's the magnitude? The magnitude, that follows the formula, one vector equivalent to the electric field times the magnetic field over mu naught. Electric field, we know this is 100 volt per meter. Magnetic field is from the question one, 3.3, 3, 10 to the negative 7 Tesla. And the mu naught, mu naught is or pi times 10 to negative 7. Right? So the result of the point vector is 26. They use watt per meter square. Or you can use gel and per meter square second. And number five. What's the peak electromagnetic energy density in the wave? Okay, the energy density, also a formula that will be epsilon non e square, or you can use magnetic field to calculate the density and energy density. You should get the same answer. The result should be the same, so you can check. The result will be 8.8, .8, 10 to the negative 8 gel per meter cube. Okay, so let me take a pause. Do you have any question? Okay, that's fine. Um, let me move on. Uh, number three will be a capacitor question. The capacitor connect with a battery. So the first two question is easy. I think you should get the point. First of all, what's the electric field between the phase of the capacitor? We have a formula to calculate the electric field inside the capacitor. We know the electric field is uniform. So we don't need to do the gradient of the potential. We only need to use uh, the voltage divided by the distance between two plates. So D is the separation. That's a point zero, a point one meter millimeter, and the voltage is ten volt. So we will have a thousand. Okay, uh, hold on, not a thousand. It will be ten to the five volt per meter. Okay, that's easy. And number two, what's the magnitude? Uh, what's the magnetic field between the plates? So, um. This is a trivial question. There is no magnetic field because the electric field is a constant. This is a constant and it doesn't change with time. Zero. If it doesn't change with time, then the B is zero. So in this uh, circuit, battery provide a constant voltage. The distance is also constant. So the magnetic the electric field in between is constant. E is a constant, then B is zero. Okay. Then you have two credits in your pocket, but number three is a little bit tricky. The next one, the plates are pulled apart by keeping the left plate fixed. It's fixed and the right plate is moving and with the speed. This is a constant speed. 
Okay, well, the plate is moving. Is there a current in the wire? Okay, to check if the current, if there's a current, we only need to figure out if the charge on the plate change. Check if the charge Q on the plate. So if the charge change, then that will induce a current. If the charge remain the same, then there's no current. Because we have the current is equal to the change of the charge over time. Right? If the charge change, then it will current. And let's see, we know the battery connect with a capacitor. The voltage is a constant, the voltage doesn't change, but if we increase the distance, we will decrease the capacitance. Since we know the capacitance is defined by the symmetry, the geometry of the uh, capacitor, that will be the area over the distance. So if the distance increase, we will decrease the capacitance. And the charge on the plate, could be calculated by using the capacitance times the voltage. The voltage is the same, but the capacitance decrease, so the charge decrease. So if we pull apart the two plates, we will decrease the charge on the plate. If the charge decrease, then that means the positive charge flow in this way and the negative charge flow in this way. So there's a flow of charge in the circuit, then there is current. There is current. That's number three. So yes. Number four. After one second, when the capacitor plays have a separation of 0.7 millimeter, and what's the electric field inside the capacitor? So uh, what's the electric field inside the capacitor? The same thing, we use the same formula, E equals the uh, voltage divided by the separation. The separation now increased to 0.7 millimeter, what is it remain the same, uh, 10 volts. So that's uh, 1.4 times 10 to the four volt per meter. Okay, number five. After one second, while the plate is moving, what's the magnetic field between the plates of the circular capacitor? What's the magnetic field? So, um, the reason why there is a magnetic field because the electric field change. The electric field is a function of the distance and the distance is a function of time. Right? Um, if this is true, then the E change over time. So that's why we will see the induced magnetic field. Okay, let's see. We use Maxwell's equation to calculate the electric field, or to calculate the magnetic field. The magnetic field is equivalent to the mu non, epsilon non, the change of electric field times the distance over two. The distance is the distance of the testing point from the axis, this is axis. And if this is the plate. We're going to calculate the um, distance of five centimeter from its axis. So R is five centimeter. Mu non and epsilon non are constant value could be found on the equation sheet. The tricky things 
uh, here is to calculate the derivative of the electric field. The derivative of the electric field is calculated from the formula, formula of the electric field. The E is a function of D. So the voltage is 10 volt, and the distance at the beginning is 0.1, then with a constant moving speed, 0.6, that will be 0.1 millimeter plus 0.6 millimeter per second times the time. This is the electric field. Then to do the derivative, This is equal to minus 10 volt times the speed 0.6 millimeter per second over 0.1 millimeter plus 0.6 millimeter per second time square. So this is a derivative, right? We do the uh, square on the denominator, then we multiply by speed on the numerator. This is a derivative of one over, uh, one over time. Then we will find out the after one second, so one second mean t equal to one. t, t equal to one. So then we will have the derivative of the electric field that will be negative 12 times 10 to the third volt per meter per second. Okay, that's the derivative of the electric field. Then we plug into the formula, we get the magnetic field equals negative 3.4 times negative 15 Tesla. So, this is number five. Number six, assume now the capacitor was charged in such a way that the potential difference between the plates is still 10 volts, okay? Um, but no battery is connected. So that means we have two plates with charge on the plate, but there's no connection. So the connection break, no connection. If there's no connection, but we are still moving the plate, so what will change for the five question? So let me go back to question one. So the electric field is equivalent to the voltage over distance. So at the beginning, the distance and the voltage, if we use the same value, the electric won't change. This doesn't change, no change. And the number two, magnetic field, the electric field doesn't change, so magnetic field is also zero, so no change. Number three, if we pull apart the two plates, is there any current inside the plate? So if we check the circuit, the circuit is not connected, so the two plates has no connection. If there's no connection, the charge won't flow. No connection. If there's no connection, there's no current. No current. So if there's no current, there's change. And the answer is no. Number four, um, when we um, pull apart the plate, does the electric field change? Let's check. The electric field only depends on the charge on the plate. According to Gauss's law, the electric field between two plates is equivalent to the charge on the plate over the area of uh, the plate divided by a constant. So if the charge is the same, then the electric field won't change. So that means the electric field will be equivalent to the electric field in the question one. That will be this one. 
10 to the 5 or 10 to the 5. So that means no matter how um, you pull up, apart the capacitor, we won't change the electric field. So the electric field is not this one, it's this one. So yes, it changed. Number five, after one second, uh, when the place is moving, what's the magnetic field induced by the electric field? And as I said just now, the electric field doesn't change when we pull apart the plates. So that means the DE over DT is a zero. So magnetic field is zero. And the answer is yes, change. There's no induced magnetic field because electric field is constant. Okay, do you have other questions? <clears throat> um, next one. Um, circuit. We have two capacitor and two resistor. At the beginning, the switch is open. And so the connection will be a battery connect with two capacitor in series. Right? There's nothing to do with the resistor. The resistor won't um, affect the capacitor because the, they are connected in parallel and this branch and this branch has no interaction. Now let's see what's the voltage on the capacitor one and the capacitor two. To solve the voltage, we need to know the charge because in this case, we have the same charge on the capacitor. So the charge on the same, so we can calculate the charge that will be the total voltage is 30 volts. That will be equivalent to the voltage on the first capacitor plus the voltage of the second capacitor. So the first capacitor, the voltage is charge over capacitance one plus the charge over capacitance two. Okay, we can solve the charge. That will be 30 volt over one over C1 plus one over C2. And the C1 is two mu F so one is 1.34 mu f. So the charge is 24 mu c mu c, or we can use 24 times 10 to the negative six crude. Then the voltage of the first capacitor will be the charge over capacitance one. That will be uh, 24 mu C over 2 mu F. That will be 12 volt. 12 volt. And the voltage on the C2 will be the total voltage, 30 volt minus 12 volt, it will be 80 volt. Number three, what's the charge Q1 of the capacitors C1 when the switch closed? After switch close, then we will have the capacitor and the resistor connected in parallel, and this capacitor and this resistor connect in parallel. So we have a circuit looking like this. Capacitor. Where is the capacitor? Resistor like this. Then the voltage on the capacitor is determined by the resistor. So the voltage one, voltage two, depend on the resistor. And then we know for the resistor one, the voltage is equivalent to the total voltage and the separate in ratio of the first resistor. So this is a 30 volt 
this is 80 ohm the denominator is 100 volts so that will be uh how much 24 volt if there's a 24 volt and the charge will be voltage times the capacitance the capacitance and is two so Uh, 24 volts times 2 mu F. So that will be 48 mu C. And what's the voltage on the second capacitor? So the total is 30. The first one is 24. Right? So we have 6 volt uh, residue. then plot the charge on the first capacitor at time equal to zero to the infinity. No, the capacitor start from 24 mu C and increase to 48 mu C. So we have 24 mu C increased to 48 mu C. So it increased, but the capacitor were not allowed to increase as a jump. So at the beginning, that's 24, because it's a 48, it's a 24. At the beginning, start from here. So this is at time equal to zero, when the switch uh, immediately close. The so when time goes to infinity, the charge is 48. So this is when time goes to infinity. So to get this curve, it's not a jump. This is not a jump. It will be increased slowly. And go to h the maximum. So this is how we sketch uh, the the curve of the charge over time. Number six. Uh, if we insert a material to change the capacitance, how does the charge change? How does the voltage change? So we know the capacitance has a relation with the dielectric constant. That's the epsilon naught times epsilon times the area over the distance. So those these parameters are constant. The only thing will change is the dielectric constant. So the capacitance increased by a factor of five. But the voltage is determined by the resistor. Resistor. So the resistor doesn't change, so the voltage is the same. Voltage is the same, and the charge equivalent to the capacitance times the voltage. So the charge will increase by a factor of five. The charge after we insert the material over the original charge is equal to five. And the voltage after we insert the material over the initial voltage uh, will be the same. Okay, so this is a solution of uh, number six. And I've done, do you have any other question? So um, if there's no other question, um, I will see you on Friday. And I think the grids will be uploaded on the course site by next Wednesday. So, uh, don't worry for this week and um, just uh, be relaxed and we will see uh, how this grid is going. Okay, so I will see you on Friday. Thank you.